To arrest the oxidation process, another additive is introduced. It renders the oxygen molecules inactive. This keeps valves and piston crowns free of carbon, but the high temperatures and pressures around the piston skirt produce a further problem, lacquering. Gummy deposits of half-burnt fuel and oil cause the rings to stick, leading to piston wear and loss of power. To stop this happening, a detergent additive is used. It won't make a dirty engine clean, but it does form a protective barrier on metal surfaces and prevents gummy deposits from sticking to them. It keeps the metal clean, but at the expense of contaminating the oil. In any engine, complete combustion of the fuel is rare, and this causes problems, particularly in diesels. Under high compression, half-burnt gases, fuel and particles of carbon are blown past the pistons into the oil. By themselves, the carbon particles are far too small to do any harm. It takes three million of them to cover a pinhead. In the cooler parts of the engine, however, they tend to join together with water, resins and acids and settle as a thick sludge obstructing oilways and clogging filters. A dispersant additive prevents this. A film of insoluble chemical forms around each particle, keeping them separate and small enough to pass easily through the oil filter and between the working parts. When an engine stops, the oil is still open to attack. As the metal surface is cool, water droplets form. Water encourages rust. It also combines with sulfur and hydrogen compounds to produce highly corrosive acids in the oil. The alkalinity of the base oil neutralizes some of the acids. But further protection is given by an anti-corrosion additive which coats the metal surfaces with an impermeable layer. No oil can last forever. Cooling, cleaning and protecting, its components are gradually used up and have to be replenished. What matters is how well they've done their job. Oils, like the engines they serve, are constantly developing and changing. The more efficient and powerful engines become, the more stringent the demands they make on the oil. Engines also vary considerably in their design whether petrol or diesel, air-cooled or rotary. Each has its own particular lubrication needs. They can only be met by studying the effects on engine performance of each of the oil's components in turn. Tests are needed to ensure that the base oils used are chemically stable and have the necessary range of properties. And to assess the precise effect of various additives in improving flow, increasing resistance to wear and preventing corrosion. But the real skill comes not just in selecting the best components, but in achieving a delicate balance between them, so that each can make its optimum contribution without interfering chemically with the performance of any other, and so remain fully effective from one oil change to the next. The result is a range of high-quality engine oils that can be trusted to do their job whatever your engine and however extreme the conditions under which it has to work.
some machining operations don't need a cutting fluid. Drilling cast iron, for example. Free carbon in the metal acts as a lubricant, and air provides the necessary cooling. Even quite severe cuts can be made dry. But try working high tensile steel without a cutting fluid, and it's a different story. It's not only hard metals which object to dry cutting. Magnesium, for instance, is quite soft, but the frictional heat generated is plainly evident. In general, the cutting of metal needs a fluid to both lubricate and cool. Water is the simplest cutting fluid of all, and one most of us have experienced at first hand. The effectiveness of water depends on its great capacity to absorb heat. Without such an efficient coolant, he'd soon be grinding away at a red-hot tooth. In industry too, similar grinding operations use water to remove heat. But here, sodium nitrite has been added to the water to prevent corrosion of the metal. For a water-based fluid to serve a wider range of applications, several more additives are needed. One reason is that water has high surface tension and isn't very good at wetting. A wetting agent is therefore incorporated to reduce surface tension, allowing greater contact with solids. As well as corrosion inhibitors and wetting agents, many other additives, notably lubricants and bactericides, must go into the composition of a modern synthetic cutting fluid. Synthetic cutting fluids are ideal for heavy duty grinding. Good wetting, cooling and lubrication allow high rates of metal removal without debris loading the surface of the wheel. But synthetic fluids are not restricted to grinding. For capstan work, as well as for many other machining operations, they provide the right balance of properties. Metal removed by a single point tool appears very different from the debris of fine metal particles produced by a grinding wheel. But these specks of grinding swarf are revealed as something familiar by the electron microscope. They are identical to the large chips cut by a single point tool. So grinding is fundamentally the same machining operation. This is because the surface of a grinding wheel consists of a multitude of tiny crystals, each like a single point tool. This is a typical example of the shearing action of a cutting edge. A lubricant promotes a smooth cut and a well-formed chip, which comes away cleanly from the face of the tool. Let's see it again, but this time without a lubricant. The increase in friction causes the chip to cling to the face of the tool. A very much deeper cut, still without a lubricant, shows, much exaggerated, the fundamental behaviour of metal during all cutting operations. Ahead of the cutting tool, the metal deforms and builds up on the tool face. The tougher the metal and the deeper the cut, the greater the lubrication needed to reduce friction and ease the flow of metal from the workpiece. This lubrication must be supplied by a cutting fluid, like so. In metal cutting, frictional heat can be made visible by the infrared camera. This is an infrared picture of a man smoking a cigarette, with the hottest areas showing as white and red. When metal is sheared off a workpiece, heat, shown as red, is greatest around the tool cutting edge and along the chip, which cools rapidly as it curls away in front of the tool. The faster the cut, the greater the frictional heat. Again, the hottest parts show as white and red. Exactly how cutting produces friction and heat can be understood by examining an apparently smooth metal surface. The trace indicates a very bumpy landscape. 
A cross-section of the metal under a microscope shows the rough surface in more detail. Surface asperities rubbing together cause frictional heat and abrasive wear. Without a lubricant, seizure will occur. To avoid this, the opposing surfaces must be kept apart. A film of oil is the commonest lubricant, often combined with water as an oil emulsion. To make an oil emulsion, simply adding oil to water isn't enough. They behave as you'd expect. But with an emulsifying agent present in the oil, it will then disperse into fine droplets to form a milky emulsion. The more emulsifying agent present in oil, the smaller the droplets and the clearer the emulsion. Mechanical equipment ensures thorough mixing of oil and water and in the correct proportions. But whatever method is used, oil must always be added to the water, never water to oil. Clear oil emulsions are used extensively for grinding. Milky emulsions find a wide variety of applications. the best results from all water-based fluids, it should be remembered they are vulnerable to attack by bacteria or fungi. This is especially true when machines are shut down for the weekend and left in a dirty condition. Pockets of refuse invite a variety of bugs and nasties which feed and grow in the cutting fluid. But all this is easily avoided by clean working conditions. With good housekeeping, oil emulsions have a longer working life and provide a pleasant and efficient cutting fluid. Up to a point. Different metals and different machining operations mean that oil emulsions have to give way to a different type of fluid with greater lubricating power. These are the neat oils. The simplest are the straight mineral oils of various viscosities. Straight mineral oils are normally used with easily machined metals, like some kinds of brass. Because straight mineral oils have only about half the heat absorbing capacity of water-based fluids, a copious and well-directed flow of oil must be maintained over the cutting zone. For metals more difficult to machine than brass, extra lubricating power is needed. This is supplied.